together. We got uh, we got Clara and you and McGregor coming up, coming up this Sunday, I think. We got um, Mick Rock, another legendary photographer, maintenance. Amazing, amazing eye on that guy. Um, we got, I'm not sure, I, we, there's a few other people, but I, I don't know how, if they're, uh, if we should re reveal them yet, because, because, because it's a, a secret, and it's a surprise, and I don't want to ruin the surprise, I don't want to spoil the surprise. Yeah, I think Ewan is going live on, uh. On Sunday, Vinny Pastore is going to be going on. We got him coming up soon. Um, we did Ashley. You can see it on this page. We did her the first week. What's up, Joe? What's up, Joseph D'Onofrio? What's good? You can check out our boy Joseph in uh, Gravesend, new TV show, and he's in our film. Good actor, funny motherfucker, New York guy. Very talented. Very talented. As we wait for Ricky to... When's the movie coming out? The movie's coming out, you know... Hopefully... At the end of the year. Your stuff looks great, Joseph. You look you look great in the film. Joseph, Joseph plays uh, one of the mob... One of the mob guys, you know? Um... You played it beautifully, man. You you added just the right amount of ingredients to the cake. It was really it was really awesome working with you, man. Um, actually, you should. We'll have you on too, man. You gotta you gotta pop on and and chat. Hey, Ricky, if you're on, uh, let me see. Let me try to request you. Lazy Hustler. Okay, there we go. Sorry. What's up, Ricky? Oof. How are you? Good, man. Good. My mellow. Oh my God, that's a complicated question. We can start there. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. What's, what's the diggy wiggy? Hey, man. How's it going out there in New York, bro? Where are you at? You at the crib? Yeah, in Greenwich Village. You getting out much? I, that camera? Uh, yeah, you know. I don't know. It's weird. Um, that's an interesting question. It's just you know weird times. Yeah, these are weird times. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, there's a lot of elbow room out there, so it's actually good for taking pictures. Mm. You know, street photography being my forte. So you know, uh, whatevs. This is weird. I've been mainly just going to the deli yeah. and back and just yeah. staying in bed. It's weird shit. You know, these, these, you know, I'm lucky. I'm just me. So, I mean, a lot of my friends have businesses with families, so it's complicated for them. And I feel bad for them. Yeah. But and, uh, for me, it's just me. So there's not that much overhead. So. I just, you know, I'm just existing. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm in, you know, I'm in Chicago working on the edit. Oh, the really? Film we did um, remotely and working on the score as well. So I'm keeping I'm busy. Good. Um, it's actually good. You know, if you use this time constructively, it's amazing. Hmm. You could get a lot done. But me, I'm very lazy, so I don't really do much. I mean, my place is a mess. <laughs> I need to, like... See, I gotta clean. I gotta clean this shit up. I just don't clean. I'm mad lazy. I gotta get my dragon lady made over here. <laughs> you got Utah Jazz back 
Uh, that's a New Orleans jazz. That's a uh, oh. Pistol Pete Maravich throwback. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh. Oh shit! So. Uh, I I know you're in you're in this you're in the sports and it seems like I, from your Instagram I see you you post some iconic iconic sports figures up there that that I I, I know well from growing up you know because my uh -huh. father actually had a baseball card shop for for a few oh, years. Oh shit! Was, for real? Yeah, when I was a kid, so I used to go to like oh, the shit. remember those conventions you'd have and they have tables and you'd be selling uh -huh. them and shit. So I used to go to those with them and and, and well, I, I got something that, right here. Can you see this? I got my, uh, oh, it's my Cub Scout thing. Um, let me see. Fuck. Are you fucking, this thing is weird. I'm pulling out my, can you see that? Uh, it's my uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rookie card. Oh, Lou shit. Cinder. Uh, I got a fucking Jerry West rookie card. Oh wow! Is, uh, you got that in the case, right? No, this one I'm not. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Just loose. But, uh, I got a 1970 New York Knicks championship card signed nice. by Walt Frazier. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I started collecting cards in third grade, 1970. Whew. You said something interesting so today, when we were talking. You were you were saying that that like you know when you're taking photographs, you like to think of it a lot, or you used to, or I don't know if this is still part of your process, as like kind of like collecting sports cars. And I thought that was really fucking oh. dope, you know, because like I want to get yeah. a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. Well, more like I want this person, I want that person in my mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when I was shooting the club scene or. Or anything in the 80s. Actually, still. Actually, I do that with dogs now. Oh, for wow. my Instagram, For my Instagram pages. They're like, oh, I want that dog. I want this dog. That dog in my collection. Yeah. That's funny. Is Are that, you still there? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? You look like you're, you're not moving. Yeah, it's probably just frozen. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Um, so, so, so obviously, you know, for those, for people who are watching something that reason why we want different creatives, you know, like you on to speak with, because I think when we were, when we were creating this movie, you know, uh -huh. myself and I know Raul and some of the other key people uh, involved in the film, like. We're just out there, you know, I was producing records for, for the last 20 years, you know, um, playing, in different, wow. playing in different bands, doing different art, just like oh. graffiti as a kid, all this, just doing all this shit, uh -huh. you know, coming from a working class family, just doing what I have available to me. And then that, all those things kind of led us, led me to the film and then, and Raul the same way. Uh -huh. just doing, and it, you know, all the art that you do leads you to the specific place. And then the journey is, is is you know the reward um and for you you know you've been in the new york times the post rolling stone village voice newsweek time everywhere you you that nah. so your shit has led you through so much so so i guess my mm. question my, my first question is yeah you, yeah, you, yeah what's the point <laughs> you, <laughs> i'm just kidding do you know do you see do you do, do you ever see since you know we just shot a film do you do you see yourself ever directing in the film or, or writing something like that? No, I'm too lazy. I used to do a public access TV show, though, in the early 90s called Rapping with the Rickster. Yeah. That's the closest thing I ever came to directing. Yeah. No, nah, too lazy. I just, I like street photography or photography because I take my picture, click, and then I keep it moving. That's yeah. it. I, I can't stand around. I give it to anyone that could do it. Uh, yeah. Saw a good movie the other day on TCM. Night of the Iguana. <laughs> From like '61. Mm -hmm. Night of the Iguana, directed by John Huston. Mm hmm. You know about him? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's icon. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, they had a little after thing, like the making of the movie. And, you know, that dude, 
he, you know, there's a lot to, that goes on with the director. He's like a quarterback. Absolutely. He has a lot he has to deal with. So, you and know, I give it to anyone that could do it. He was in that golden age also, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I, and I know you've heard it a million times. You can probably relate to it because you basically, you know, <laughs> photographed the golden age of hip hop, which, you know. Actually, I was lucky. Yeah. If you, it depends who you ask, like music experts. Some people will say the golden era was between 86 and 89. Hmm. So if that's the case, I was all up in that. Yeah. Just happened to be timing wise. Yeah, that was a good time. That was a fun time, eighty six to eighty nine. That was definitely the golden age of that, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and and even yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the you know there was music, but then you know not only you know have you you did that, but you also do a lot of you know like a accomplished lifestyle photographer. You know you. You know, from different artists, from Basquiat to all that stuff, you know? Um, uh, well, that was who was around, you know. Basically, you know, as a person and, you know, staying in tune with what's going on, just put your pants on and get out the house. And I would just, you know, my style was just shooting, you know, pro photos on a hangout tip. So, you know, I got my little, you know, sure shot, auto jammy. So I just whip it out when the time was right. Just press, you know, PhD, push your dummy. <laughs> and, you know, luckily it worked out. You know, I didn't go to school or anything for photography. It's just something I do because it's fun. Yeah. But luckily, luckily in this crazy civilization, you know, you can make money or make a living from taking pictures and photography. So... That led, that opened a lot of doors for me, you know, and it kind of progressed. I got into writing, like editorial shit, you know, I get my pictures published in magazines, so then I got into writing columns or articles or interviews, and, you know, then it's the, the public access TV show, Rapping with the Rickster, and, you know, just, you know, kind of just had a natural progression, and, uh... I don't know, and voila, I don't know, I just we kind of came, you know, I mean, if you got something to offer, and there's certain people who want it, then, you know, you come up, so I was lucky in that way. What was that world so, like, mm -hmm. back, what was that world like, uh, just, just culturally out there? It was fun, it was interesting, you know, it was interesting, you know, a lot of shit is whack and corny now. So I don't mean to sound like a curmudgeon, but I mean, as far as pop culture goes, a lot of shit is just people I'm not interested. So, you know, I just stayed in myself, you know, lone wolf style. And uh, actually, you know, you ever seen on my Instagram when I do these little video vignettes, walking and then play, playing some music? you know, on top of it, some funky jazz. Mm -hmm. That's how I like, that's what I like doing. I like walking and playing, you know, music that I like and just creating these little minute long vignettes. Those are fun. Was there, and, so, sorry, go on. So, that's what I was telling you before with Instagram, like there's some, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but, I like that I could post I could post shit up and people well people who just come upon the posts can look at them and get a you know get a chuckle you know they might be dope visually and then there'll be some humor to it but for people who who know about the pictures I I've been shooting since 85 they'll look at my post and be like Oh, okay. This is what he's shooting now. You know, it's part of my le not legacy, my uh, lineage. Yeah, lineage. So you know, like you know, I take a picture of a dog for one of my hashtags, and then 
you know, people will be like, oh, shit, he shot that dog. That's the same guy who shot, like, Run DMC in front of the Eiffel Tower in 87. And now this is what he's doing, taking pictures of dogs on the street. <laughs> so, you know, I like it. People could see what I'm doing and then get a kick out of it. So I get a kick out of that. Absolutely. It's and, you know, I'll show, show companies that my game is still on. Maybe I get some gigs. I like, you know, one other thing, if I post up, like, a print or a picture, then, you know, people will hit me up on DM to see if they could purchase a print. That's always nice. Yeah. What do you got going on there? Fidel Castro kind of thing? This is the vibe, yeah, Fidel. <laughs> <laughs> like, late, late Fidel. Light up. Late Fidel. Break out the cigar. Yo, did you... So, like, what about... Okay, like, access access back, you know... If we're starting... If, if we're talking about oh. you know, when you first started, what was the deal oh. with access back then? Because now New York has become so fucking exclusive. You know, I've been there oh, for like 10 years. Um, I know. You know... You know, as an artist... Somebody story. Going out shit, shit. Yeah, shit is just, you know, tight. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, shit is tight. I could get away with a lot of shit back in the day, sneaking in places and uh, just whatever. You know, it's a different story, but, you know, whatever. It's, I mean, listen, it's what you, life is what you make out of it. So, you know, it's a state of mind. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know... I don't really need to go into too many functions or events or parties or whatnot. Um, I'm fine, like, just outside, strolling in the street, sitting in Washington Square Park, you know, just meeting up with people on a park bench. That's my happenings. So yeah. I, did all, I did all that other shit, parties, events, you know. I used to sneak into a lot of shit. Mm. One time, I snuck into the Plaza Hotel for a party, and I got I snuck, and then I went to a stairway to smoke a joint. And Amit Amit Erdogan, the guy who founded Atlantic Records, mm -hmm. was having a cigarette, smoking a cigarette in the stairway. I was like, "Oh, Dip, what's up, Mister Erdogan? You want if I join you?" He said, "Sure." So he had a cigarette. I smoked a joint. We talked. We took he let me take a few pictures of him. You know, shit like that. Hmm. So I don't know. I I used to uh and also you know, you travel by yourself as a lone wolf, you can get around swiftly. Rather than like if you you hang out with a bunch of people, it, it moves slow. Everyone's like, What do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? I don't know, what do you wanna do? That's I don't bad. know. What do you want? So, you know, I've been, you know, I'm click free. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get stuck with a bunch of people. I go where I please. Yeah. That's how it is. I can come and go as I want. And I like that. You know, I don't like being a cage lion. Yeah. And you go where the energy is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, basically. I'm pretty lucky that I, I have that freedom, yeah. you know, solo dolo. You know, I'm not, you know, like I'm not in a relationship. I've had, you know, I've been in relationships, you know, like four times in my life, like two-year relationships each. Hmm. And each time was a fucking painful, pain in the ass. Hmm. I regret each fucking girlfriend I had, except my first <laughs> one, Susan DeFranco, my first girlfriend when I was 16, 17 in the village. Sweet girl. No, no, no problems. I, you know, but, you know, I just like being a solo dolo. It's easy. Keeps me in a good spirit. Yeah. No, you know, I feel sometimes my friend, like in the holidays, my friends would be calling me when they got to go traveling to these family functions. And they're like, yo, I wish I was you right now, getting to lie in bed, do nothing. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, 
What can I say? Do you like that? Is that, is that freedom? Does that freedom of not being tied down? Do you, do you attribute that to like having freedom as an artist? Well, the artistry comes along with it. First and foremost, as a person, I just like it. And as being a quote unquote artist, something has to inspire me. So, you know, that's what that comes about. And uh, I just, you know, I just go with the flow. I mean, I hate to sound cliche-ish, but uh, let me see. See, like, uh, like if I see shit, you see my notes? Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Like, things that I see that inspire me, I write them down and then I follow through. And You know, one thing I dig... One thing, some people hit me up from Vancouver. I did a, my world famous, world be free famous slideshow in Vancouver in the last week of January at a cool club. Really great circumstance, great venue, great crowd, all seated. Music system was dope. You know, and I just, you know, when I do my slideshow, I just have my pictures projected on a screen one at a time, and I talk about them, you know, and I have one of my mixtapes in the background, usually the Funky Uncle Park Bench mixtape. And, uh, you know, I talk about the pictures with the funk in the background and make it humorous. So people were digging it. You know, I had the audience screaming with laughter. And, you know, got a standing ov- standing ovation. And I love doing that, talking about my life with the pictures on a humorous tip. Mm. So, you know, so some girl just hit me yesterday say, yo, your show was epic in Vancouver. You know, I was on edibles and you had me screaming with laughter. And I was like, you know, thank you. I appreciate that. I never planned to go into showbiz, but it just kind of like, work unfolded like that Mm. that's how a lot of shit happens you know that's another way how i make a living the shit i try to make happen professionally just you know i end up getting mushed or you know heisman trophied yeah you know with the stiff arm and then it's the dope shit just falls on my lap yeah so yeah so like when you know, you take a photo of somebody like Andy Warhol, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've, you know, been in the room with um, so many, so many different artists, you know, and, and I feel like when, when you, fo- when you, when you, a certain type of person likes to be photographed by a certain type of person, if you know what I mean, like, uh, you know, when, yeah, you know, that, that good you question, know, you yeah, the energy or you don't, you know, yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's funny you say that. I was just talking about this with somebody the other day. Like, if I see a you know cute dog, sometimes I'll ask the owner, "Hey, can I take a picture of your dog?" And they give me a doo doo look and walk away, like no. Yeah. And my friend, whoever's there, will be like, "Holy shit, doesn't he know who you are?" I'm like, "Eh, no, not everybody knows, you know." And you know, he's an idiot. Or, you know, girls be giving me doo doo looks. They think I look like a fucking a, a kook. And then, you know, but if they know who I am, then they're like, oh, my God, you're like so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, I guess. So it's weird with the recognition thing, you know? Yeah. Does that, so, does that make sense, what we were talking? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, I know, um, you know. I oh, was- also, also, with, like, on the street photography tip, like, if you want to take, you see somebody and you want to take their picture, right? Or a picture of them. Then the question comes up, do I ask or not ask? Hmm. That's a really yeah, good you, If you take a picture and you get it and it's cool and you got it, but sometimes they might see you taking it. And if they're not with it, you could have a little, you know, conundrum. Yeah. So do you do ask or not ask? I mean, you could not do it and get the naturalness or you could be courteous or, you know, and ask them, but then you blow the naturalness of the moment. Yeah. So that's a, you know, that's a question right there at that moment. 
and then naturalness of the photo that translates when you see it you know well i mean if i see someone and i think wow it's a beautiful image right there i'd be like i got to capture that it's like how bad do i want it yeah you know right. i've only had one one only one time i took a picture of someone on the street and they saw me and they got uh, this lady, she was like in a bus. She was in an outfit from a hotel, smoking a cigarette on Seventh Avenue, and I shot it. And she wasn't with it. And uh, that's the only time. Usually, I mean, you know, it it varies when I do ask or not ask. You know, I talk about it with some uh, photographer friends of mine, like Jamel Shabazz. You know him? Um, I don't think so. No. Oh, man, you need to Google him. He has the famous book, Back in the Day, with, like, two Puerto Rican kids on the street facing each other, doing Is the it... b-boy pose. Yeah, yeah, sure. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Beautiful soul, that guy, Jamel. You check, yo, check his Instagram. His shit is on another level. He's ridiculous. He's he's really interesting guy. Very, very... uh beautiful soul uh real gentleman and he just had a job for 20 years as a corrections officer at rikers island prison oh wow yeah you would never know it because he's so polite and he's a big man <laughs> he's fucking hard dude but he's very he's like a gentle bear i love him he's a great guy yeah and uh you know there's there's a you know X amount or select people who are quote unquote photographers that I dig. You were talking you know? about Ron Galella the other day. Oh yeah, Ron Galella, my oh, that's my big bro. He's he just turned eighty nine, I think. Didn't he get punched in the it, face by Brando? Yeah, he got sucker punched in the jaw. Yeah, uh, it's a famous story. He he took a picture of Marlon Brando and Dick Cavett on Seventh Avenue, and he got sucker punched. And then, actually, Brando's knuckles got infected, and then he had to go in the hospital for a few days. And Ron, Ron, you know, sued him, but he said the money he made in the lawsuit just paid enough for the, the dental problems. Oh, for fucking up his jaw and shit? Yeah, he knocked out some teeth or something. But, you know, you've seen that famous picture where he's, like, behind Brando, and he's, like, wearing a football helmet? No, I don't know if I – probably – I don't know. I was looking through Just all this Google shit. Ron Google Ron and Marlon Brando. You'll see this picture of Ron. It's hilarious. I love Ron Galella because, first of all, he's a beautiful soul. Oh, I see it. I see it. <laughs> yeah. This is like Superman <laughs> era Brando. Huh? Remember when Brando was in Superman, that first he played the Superman's dad? Yeah. This looks like that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh huh. Okay, hold on. I gotta blow my nose. Hold up. Ooh! Yikes. You're right. Hey. Yeah. Ooh. Yikes. Let me put on my radio. Put on some jazz 88. Yeah. Got my little. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, I love Jazz 88 radio station. You know, you know, Ricky, so I, I, I got to ask. I know a lot of people are asking in the questions here, and I, and I, I also oh. want to ask, and I don't want to do it by looking it up, but like a big, something that, that really translated that, that across the country and the world was when you started working with the Beastie Boys, and a lot of those photos inspired people like Spike Jones, myself, mm. all genera generations and generations of mm. artists after that. How did you start working mm. with the Beastie Boys? Uh, well, at first, you know, I knew I knew Ad Rock from the village, from the same neighborhood. He's like five years younger than me, though. And then uh, I met them through a show they played just after the Madonna tour in '85. Mm -hmm. So I started hanging out with them in that fall and winter of 85 into 86. You know, in 85 is when I started taking pictures. So anyway, in the spring of 86, 
Uh, I got a gig from this magazine, the East Village Eye, to shoot them for the cover story. So mm -hmm. that's when I took like those pictures with them crossing the street, mm -hmm. whatnot. And then, you know, I went and I linked up with them on the Raising Hell tour in '86. Just kind of like quit my frozen lemonade job one day and just flew down and linked up with them. So I was on that famous tour for like a week in the southeast. And then they ended up bringing me on the Licensed Ill Tour in 87 as, like, the photographer mm -hmm. or whatever. And then, you know, they brought me on Check Your Head Tour. They said, this time you got to work. You got to do luggage. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I got mad pussy with that luggage cart. Oof. Anyway, and then they brought me on Lollapalooza in 94. So, you know, we were friends, and we had a good time. And then kind of like we went our separate ways in the – Mid mid to late nineties, so mm -hmm. that's that. You know, and they used some. They contacted my my manager to get pictures for their movie, which is funny because I see it looks like they're doing a live slideshow, and I've been doing that for decades. Yeah, yeah. Wonder where they got the. Wonder where Spike got the idea. Well, hey, like I said, you've inspired you know, all these people, you know, whether, whether, and this is going to take us into the next part, biting culture, which I know is a, is an art in itself, but I'm not saying anybody bit, but people are always biting and you're one of the most yeah. bitten, bitten artists. Wow. That's amazing. That scene, that's for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. That you, uh, you, you recognize that and, and, uh, acknowledge that to me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot, dude. I mean, I don't want to, like, go around making a scene saying, oh, you know, but, like, you know, having artists or graffiti artists paint on my photos, I came up with that in the late 90s. And this, this, this one chick, she bit it. You know, I just, you know, I don't like people that blatantly bite. Yeah. You know, I could see being inspired to do something but when you do something exactly how i did like i can't have much respect for it yeah you know I, it just makes me like cringe when people just blatantly bite just you know i just use it as inspiration do your own thing please absolutely you know, so whatever but i could see you know some people don't have you know you know, the capacity to, to do, make, you know, invent something or create something different on their own. So, whatevs. I, I was reading an article about, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, but my, my friend, you might know him. You, you know Eli Gessner? Who? Um, Eli Morgan Gessner. He, he started, um, co he was one of the co-founders of Zoo York and then Fat Farm with Russell Simmons. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't like that guy. Well, so, he, he, so I was reading something about I don't, like that. I, don't, I don't like that guy. I don't like that guy. He's very souped. I saw, I've, I've been in the same circles with him a few times. I don't dig that dude at all. This next topic. That's another next thing, topic. like, <laughs> another thing. Like, with people, seriously, like, I hate people that are gassed up on themselves, and they think they're fucking this and that, and they talk about themselves. Dude, I can't fucking stand people like that. And there's people, I can name names right now, right now, of dudes who fucking just, it's uncanny. You run into them, whatever, or you see them, and they just so self-congratulatory, and it's like, dude, you know, how can how can anyone stand this fucking person? Like kinda like kinda like what Trump does, always like bigging himself up. Like I can't stand people like that. And I don't know how people like there's a lot of photographers. like that's like I told you. I don't identify myself as a photographer because Yeah. I don't wanna be I don't wanna be grouped in with certain people, like jerk offs. Hmm. Dudes that are real cornballs and they use photography to make themselves look like the fucking this or that. I can name names too, but there's a few photographers who fucking refer to themselves as legends. And I'm just like, yo, get the fuck out of here. You're a fucking doofus. Yeah, well, it's like giving so, yourself your own nickname. It's, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, I know. It's amazing, dude. 
Some people <laughs> think this so fucking like fascinating. Oh my god, dude! It's so, unbelievable. So braggart. Know, go, go, I hate go, braggarts. Going off that, going off that, you know, I know that's something that used to be valued in culture. And as far as like growing up for me, it was like, you know, don't bite. You know what I mean? Like, like being yeah. Well, don't bite. Yo, be humble. Yeah. Yeah, but you, you just there's so many people, certain kind of people that are so desperate for props or attention, and it's just like. It's so obvious, and it's just like, ugh. Like, the people I gravitate to are beautiful. You know, I believe are beautiful souls, man. Like, I don't go I don't go and hang with someone or try to get down with them, whatever, just because, like, they might be known. Because they might be fucking douchebags. Yeah. You know? So. Of course. Yo. That, I, I, that's I why I don't... Like, that's why I don't really, like I said, I don't identify myself as a photographer. It's just something I do for fun. I go by individualist. Yeah. So, you know, and that's that. There's, there's, like, the people who are gassed up on themselves and I fucking reject them or they know I don't like them, you know, they hate me because I don't fucking suck up to them because I could see that they're very superficial yeah, yeah. You know, they're braggarts, and it's just like, and I just don't know how other people don't recognize it, and they get they, they, they get with these people, and it's just like, well, that's what you like, that's what you like. You know, it's like, yeah. I can't, you can't tell, you can't tell some people some things, like, you can't understand why people are interested in certain people. You know, it's like art. Some people, you know, like it, some people don't, it's like, that com it's a complex thing. It perplexes me how certain people get over professionally, even though they're fucking douchebags. Yeah. Well, so, whatever. But yeah, it's the corporatization of everything. You know, even for like music, it's like you know they yeah they, yeah. they, they, they steal a, it. Yeah, they, that business that yeah that business the yeah. music business oof. I don't even know. Yeah, what? Well, look, man, we just made a movie. I've been doing music for twenty years, and I, I'm like, I try to uh -huh. do it this way, you know, to continue to express myself. You know. Um, uh -huh. you know? I hear you. So it's like, you can go. You I can hear you. Dance, you can create. You can sculpt. You can write. You can. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could. There's so many. You yeah. can get sports. You know, like, what are you gonna yeah. do? And you know. Well, listen. It's certain thing. Like I have. Like whenever I. You know, I kind of give advice to someone who's coming up or whatever. They want to be a photographer or this or that. I tell them, you know, from my own experience, you know, it's fun to take pictures. But if you want to be throw your hat in the ring and be professional, then, yo, it's a whole fucking... Then you got to deal with, you know... People, yeah, trying to <laughs> trying to get trying to get gigs that pay. Corporation trying to sell you. Well, you know, sell your shit yeah. to get people to reach in their pocket and give you a check for what you do creatively. That's uh, a that's a the, yeah. That could be a, a challenge. So you know, there's a whole bunch of things involved in the in the. Uh, the whole thing of being a pro, you know, there's luck, timing, you know, all kinds of shit. Politics. So much politics. Uh, you know, there's certain people, this may be, this may be shocking to you, but I'm not, I'm not enchanting to everybody. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people do not like me. You know what, because... you know what, Ricky, most people, most people that I've met and I talk about with Raul a lot. If you believe in something and you truly believe in it, and and you, and everything, all your energy is making you do it. This none of these industries are set up to accept that. That you have to go through all these things. So you're gonna piss a lot of people off. So people who are successful and and, and change shit in the world culturally mm -hmm. and artistically, they're not liked most of the time by a lot of people. Yeah, true. Yeah, I get. I like watching documentaries on. Oh. I like watching documentaries. Oh, shit. Did I just fuck up? No, sorry. Oh, fuck. 
My okay. shits are fucked up. Back in. Let me see. I'm going to add you back in. Shit. Sorry yeah. about that. All good. Um, yeah, whatever, Duke. You know, life... You know, um, it's complex. It, sometimes it's simple, but it's complex too. But, you know, I'm always grateful when some cool people like what I do and they want to recruit me to do it for them. And then I enjoy working with them and and make money and create something beautiful. Like, that's a, like the ultimate you know, Absolutely. it's something, you know, it's like relationships, you know, it's like hooking up with someone that, you know, you're in sync with. It's a beautiful thing. I don't know. It's, it's, sometimes it's, it doesn't come around. I don't know. It's, it's complicated sometimes, hmm. you know, and no, um, Ooh, I like this song. <laughs> I'm a member of Jazz 88 WBGO Shout out to DJ Brian Delp Love that guy So hey, incredible Do you play any instruments, Ricky? No, I play baritone horn How about this oh, for an album cover? Oh yeah, that's great <laughs> I love this cover Jimmy Smith Yeah. The incredible Jimmy Smith you I get my records. Yeah, I, I spin too. Let's see some of those I records. DJ clubs. Well, I got this one, Brother Jack McDuff. Man, album covers used to be so much better, I'll tell you that. Oh, forget about it. Um, you know, I do a plethora of things. You know, I like to spin. I got a couple of regular gigs at, at bars. They love what I play, the funky jazz type shit yeah. from the 60s. And, uh, you know, I'm on a good, I like how I'm living. Yeah. I like what I do. Oh, you like my sneaker collection? Can Let's you see. see it? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a guy. I had That's a great, guy. Man. I had a guy. That's great. How much more time is there? This is going quickly. No, no, we're good. We're good. Um, I just want to ask you a couple more questions. Yeah, no, no, I'm not rushing you. How, yeah. how, how long has it been? A half hour? Something like that. Oh, okay, good. No, sometimes it goes quickly. I'm enjoying this conversation. No, it's all good. I'm learning a lot. I'm getting to ask you questions. I wanted to ask you something that I wanted to, to, to ask you. Because, so, I remember in like 2000 four or five i remember saying to my friends i'm like man there's no pictures of me from like the time i got 18 to like when i left like my parents house to like now because there was no more no one there's no cameras on phones and I, when i was a kid my parents would take photos and then there's like a group there's like a like almost like 10 years where there ain't that many photos there's, but then uh -huh. photos got added to the the, the cameras got added to the phones mm -hmm. and then it changed photography completely and oh yeah 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 you know, and I know you're I like on Instagram. It. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I don't have a problem with it. The only thing I don't like is, like, so many people just post whack pictures. Yeah, yeah. It's just of correct. themselves. A lot of narcissists. You fuck yeah. Oof. Oh, my God. It's like, yo, relax. What about the selfie? What do you think about the selfie? I mean, if it's done... Tastefully, like you saw the one I posted the other day or yesterday, me and Send Dog from Cypress Hill. I don't know if I saw it. No. Well, I think that's a good. That's a good selfie. <laughs> that's funny. It's not just me in the mirror. Like, look what it. Look at me. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. How, look how pretty I'm trying to be. Yeah. Look how dope I'm trying to be. Oh, I see it. See, you see that one? That's yeah, from. Yeah. 
Yeah, I liked it. I, I like Cypress Hill. They were fun to hang out with, man. I was hanging with them when they were like, psh, boom, right out the box. They were like redonkulous. Yeah. They were fun. Really cool cats, man. Really good senses of humor. I ran into uh, DJ Muggs at this big photography show I was in last year for this book, Contact High, at the Annenberg space in in L.A., I ran into him, and motherfucker had, we just, like, I haven't seen him in, like, I don't know, 15 years, but, like, when we ran into each other, I was like, yo, what's up? It was like, we, ne you know, just continued where we left off. It was funny. Mm. Love that mofo. Just, I love every, anyone who's got good soul, man. I just, I love people like that. Sometimes it brings me to tears, just when I run into good people who are, who are on the real Real cool tip. Mm. I have some good friends now, man. You know about Edan Portnoy? Creative no, Oh, man, you should check him. Google him. Edan, E-D-A-N. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful soul. Really cool. Cool white guy. <coughs> um, I don't know. I got a lot of, uh, lot of cool creative people in my life. Uh, yeah, who are, who are some, some upcoming people you want to put on? Oof. Man, there's so many. Um, I mean, off the bat, Seville, Seville Michelle, DJ Versetti, Miranda Maxwell. Oh, my God. I don't know. That's just some of the girls. Um, I don't know. I hate naming names because I forget some people, but I have a lot of good people in my life. Oh, actually, you know, this movie, not that I'm Paul Newman, but... This movie was made about me, a documentary titled The Individualist. It was like three years in the making, and it was supposed to debut two weeks ago at the Tribeca Film Festival on the 24th of April, but this fucking shit, the Trump virus, I call it, <laughs> fucking erupted. <coughs> and uh, so now it's on ice. But a lot of people in it, a lot of cameos, people, you know, giving their two cents about me. Oh, that's great. I can't and, wait to um, see that. Yeah, a lot of people in it. Lawrence Fishburne, Chuck D, LL Cool J, oh, wow. George Kalinske, the official photographer for Madison Square Garden since 66, Debbie Mazur. Yeah, man. So I, I never saw it. I was supposed to go see how it looked at the offices in early March or mid-March, but then the shit just happened. And then there's another documentary I'm in about me, sort of uh, about Def Jam, shooting Def Jam in the early years. And uh, that was supposed to air on YouTube, but then that got halted over some politics, over music. Uh, What's the name of that one? I don't know. Um, oh, Through the Lens. Through the Lens. Yeah. So there was two documentaries on me that was supposed to, you know, come out last month on me, and that just got so. Yeah, it's just gonna get pushed not, a little longer, but can't wait to see that shit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You know, I just think they'll be inspiring. I'm not mad because like, oh shit, they didn't come out because now because I'm so dope. <laughs> I'm just. I think they'll be. I think they'll be entertaining and inspirational and fun. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. The scene I did with Lawrence Fishburne, oh, my God. That shit was so fun, dude. We met up in Tompkins Square Park, and we were just laughing the whole time. That motherfucker has got some, some sense of humor. Oh, we yeah? were just cr cracking up the whole time. That was a lot of fun. Love that, man. You know, I'm 58 and a half now. Going to be 59 in November. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm still dressing like I'm eight years old. No, you still you still got that young energy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I like you. You're very cool. You're very... I like you, man. Very, very chill. And I mean, I'm not trying to, like, gas you up. I'm just letting no, you know I, I like how you do. Believe me. If I didn't man. like if I didn't like you, you would know. Because I know, I know, I know. I know. Because I can't fake the funk, dude. I'm a bad actor. 
Well, you've, man, you've inspired me and a lot of, you know, um, I'm just trying to sound professional now, but like, honestly, like, <laughs> like, I, like I said, like I said, when I was younger, you know, and like, we would look at photos and, you know, Ricky Powell's always a thing. And, and then no, it, it became, money. I told you the other day, kind of like an inspiration to like a whole generation of people. And it continues that people are constantly biting, 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 Stick. biting, biting, you know, Stick. Stick. you know, it's funny. <clears throat> I was going to be a, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I wilded it out last night. Oof. Woo! That was a hum, humdinger. I just ordered in my discreet dragon lady. <laughs> the one from Queens. We got stupid. Got zooted on Pluto dust. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my hashtags. You know, actually, you know, I get a kick out of, like, people, they dig my hashtags. You know... One guy who actually bought some pieces for me, some photos, said in the comment in one of my my chat, one of my posts last night, he said, "You're the hashtag king." And I was just like, "Oh my God, thank you, thank you." Uh, I'm very humbleized. I, I'm glad you. I'm glad. You know, I like making people. Like I said, man, being witty is, I think, you know, when you. Combine intelligence with humor. I mean, that's to me. That's I, when I see that in people. That's what I really. I'm. I'm really like. It's a, it's wow. a genius level shit. Yeah, it's something I admire. So, yeah. if I can be like that, I mean, hopefully, sort of. Like then I like that. I mean, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it feels, I mean, like I said, I went to college to be a phys ed teacher, <laughs> but, you know, things got all, I was actually a substitute teacher for like five years in the Board of Ed, <laughs> from 87 to 91-ish. Oh, it was wow. all right, it was all right, but actually I used to sneak my class, I, I became, yeah, if I had a, sub, a substitute, if I had shit to do, I would sneak the class out with me to run errands with me. Teach him, you know, the art, the art of the hustle. So you're taking photos of 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 all these, you know, of the golden age of hip hop, and then you're you're a substitute gym teacher at the same time. Oh, I like this chick, Shady Beats. Shady. She started hitting me recently. She's from like Europe, England, I think. I feel bad for them in England. They're the highest uh, quote uh, cases in the uh, virus over in Europe. Hmm. Oh, there she goes. Oh, there's one man, Jen Tokyo from Tokyo. <laughs> Love him. Beautiful soul right there. He actually designed my sticker that I put up. The okay. one that says uh, Zooted. Cool guy. I got friends around the, not around the world, because I don't know anybody over in Africa or Iceland, but I got good people in Japan and Europe. Yeah. Couple in South America. It feels good. I like what I've become. So, yeah, like, so... I went to Hunter College, right? And I was in. The, I took phys ed because I tried to take the easiest major. <laughs> so, but it was a lot of science, which was so. I had a couple of teachers. I was kind of a sloppy bum, so a lot of phys ed teachers would kind of diss me or just shit on me. And then I won the first Hunter College triathlon in November of '83. Then everybody was on my dick, and then I was like, "Yo, fall back! You're a jerk off." Oh, what's this song? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I like it. <laughs> Ooh, sick. I love it. Sick. Ooh, what is today? It feels like a Saturday night. I don't even know, man. Ooh, I love this song. Ooh. It's amazing what effect music can have on you absolutely so absolutely. uh oh gee whiz what's up that's my home girl is sf she's a good one. Oh, i like these comic i mean i like these comments wow you got a nice crowd yeah man people love you come on man you're a fucking legend <laughs> nah i'm all right thank you though uh, 
Well, hey, hey, let me let me ask you what, let me ask you one more question. Oh, I just want to. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Take well, your time. Go ahead. This thing gets cut off after an hour, so I wanted to ask. I know. That, that I think okay. is, 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 is important to me at least. Um, is there somebody you? It's a two-part question. Somebody that the the best energy you've gotten off somebody photographing them, whether they knew you were photographing them or whether you were photographing them in a controlled environment. And who do you want to shoot? To wow. That's it. Well, damn, that's a hard question. There's so many people to think of. Uh, uh man. Because uh. you've captured so much energy, you know, with your with your camera. It's uh -huh. An infinite amount. Oy, dude. I don't know. I gotta just give you that answer. I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, this is too many people to think of. A lot of people have, you know. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all the people that let me take pictures of them. And they help me, like, come up, make my material that in my tapestry of work. So I appreciate them. And um, I'm just grateful for good people. I mean... Anyone, anyone on your list now you want to... Someone you want to capture someone you fuck with oh man uh, or is that more just like in the moment vibe dude there's too many to mention I don't want to throw names out because I don't want the people who I got mutual love with to feel excluded yeah. <laughs> but if they're listening they know I got love for them and, and the feelings mutual let's put it that way yeah you know yeah and uh ooh Sick. I love it. Yo. Why was music so much doper back in the day? I mean. Ooh, that is sick. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> Damn. So yo, if anybody wants to buy any prints for me, they could DM me if I may just throw that in. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'll help you. I want to help enhance the ambiance in your in your your home or your office. I make a lot of sales like that, and I get a lot of uh, very happy customers. So it's on. Hey, you know we're and gonna you know, hire you to take the I would like to for our next film. Okay, That's I'm Diggy. Uh, I was gonna say that I would like to collaborate with you. I like you. Absolutely. I think 100%. you got some. You got some noodles in your beard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, noodle beard. Sick. You're a sick individual. S I Q U E. Hey Ricky, man. Look, it's such a fucking pleasure chatting with you, man. And, yeah. And I, we're definitely gonna collaborate with you, and we want to pull you in for this next film, and, and just get your yeah. eyes on some shit, you know. All right. I'd be I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. All right. Yo, man. you uh, you were nutrition for my soul. Really, and you're a good one. I appreciate you. You're having. Metaphysical funculations on me. <laughs> As you have for me and plenty of other people, man. Damn, you're gonna make me start crying. No, nah, really, you're beautiful. You're a beautiful young soul, man. Thanks, Ricky. All right, keep doing what you do. Yeah, you're contributing. We'll chat soon, man, and thank you. All right.